Have you ever considered how a small animal bite could be a death sentence? It might sound dramatic, but when it comes to rabies, it's a terrifying reality. Rabies is a lethal virus that jumps species, typically transmitted to humans through the saliva of infected animals. It's a silent invader, often entering our bodies through a seemingly harmless scratch or bite. The virus then begins its deadly journey, traveling through the nervous system, until it reaches the brain, wreaking havoc along the way. It's a killer, on a global scale, claiming around 60,000 lives every year. That's more than the population of many small towns wiped out annually by this relentless virus. Rabies, once it has shown its symptoms, has a shocking survival rate. Imagine being in a room with 100 people. Now picture that only four of these individuals might survive a rabies infection after symptoms have appeared. That's right, the odds of death after symptoms occur is a staggering 99.996%. Survival stories are few and far between with only an estimated 6 to 29 unconfirmed cases of people beating the odds. These are the exceptions, not the rule. Once rabies has taken hold, it's often a one-way ticket, with no return. The numbers are horrifying but they serve as a stark reminder of the deadly nature of rabies. It's not just a disease found in horror movies or distant lands, it's a real-world killer, lurking in the shadows, ready to strike when least expected. The question now is, what makes rabies so deadly? What transforms an innocuous animal bite into a potential death sentence? The answer lies in the nature of the virus itself, its mode of transmission, and its relentless journey through the human body. But what makes rabies so deadly? Let's delve deeper. What exactly is rabies, and why should we fear it? Let's pull back the curtain and get a closer look at this menacing beast. Rabies, at its core, is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammals, leading to an agonizing and almost always fatal outcome. The name rabies is derived from a Latin term meaning to rage, a fitting description for the violent neurological symptoms it inflicts upon its victims. You see, this isn't some newfangled terror that's popped up in recent times. Oh no, rabies has been a recognized threat for thousands of years. In fact, historical records dating back to the 23rd century BC have documented rabies-like symptoms in humans and animals, making it one of the oldest known diseases to mankind. Our adversary isn't picky when choosing its hosts. It can affect any mammal, but it has a particular fondness for certain species. Dogs, bats, raccoons, and foxes are the most common culprits, serving as primary reservoirs and transmitters of the virus. In these creatures, the virus lies dormant, often without causing any noticeable symptoms. But when they cross paths with humans, the story takes a grim turn. One of the most terrifying aspects of rabies is its stealth. It can lie undetected for weeks, even months before symptoms start to appear. And by then, it's usually too late. It's akin to a sinister spy infiltrating the host's body undetected and launching a deadly attack when least expected. So why should we fear rabies? Simply put, it's a silent, ruthless killer that doesn't discriminate. It's a grim reaper that lurks in the shadows, ready to strike when we least expect it. And the worst part? Once it makes its move, there's almost nothing we can do to stop it. Now that we know what rabies is, how does it reach us? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the dark world of rabies in our next segment. So, how does this fatal virus find its way into our bodies? Let's dive into the sinister journey of transmission. The most common way rabies is transmitted is through the bite of an infected animal. When an animal carrying the rabies virus bites, it injects its saliva, which is teeming with the virus, into the body of its victim. It's a disturbingly effective method of ensuring the virus finds a new host. Once inside the body, the virus doesn't immediately rush to the brain. Instead, it first infiltrates the nerve cells at the site of the bite. There, it begins to multiply and patiently bides its time. The virus then travels along the nerve pathways, away from the immune system's prying eyes making its way towards the brain. This journey can take anywhere from days to months, depending on the distance from the bite to the brain and the viral load. Upon reaching the brain, the virus multiplies rapidly, causing inflammation. This inflammation leads to the onset of symptoms such as fever, headache, and general weakness. As the disease progresses, more specific symptoms appear and may include insomnia, anxiety, confusion, slight or partial paralysis, excitation, hallucinations, agitation, hypersalivation, difficulty swallowing, and hydrophobia, fear of water. Death usually occurs within days of the onset of these symptoms. While a bite is the most common method of transmission, it's not the only way rabies can be spread. Less commonly, 
The virus can be transmitted if infected saliva comes into contact with a person's eyes, nose, mouth, or a wound. In extremely rare cases, rabies has been spread through organ transplants where the donor was unknowingly infected with the virus. The transmission of rabies is a chilling process, illustrating the virus's insidious nature and its ability to exploit the body's pathways to ensure its survival and propagation. But what happens once the virus enters our body? Why is it so deadly? That's where our journey takes us next. Once rabies enters our body, the journey towards death begins. A chilling statement, but it's the harsh reality of this ruthless virus. Once inside the body, the virus wastes no time and immediately embarks on a deadly expedition towards its ultimate destination, the brain. The virus is a stealthy traveler. It doesn't rush through the bloodstream like many other viruses. Instead, rabies takes a more sinister route, creeping along the peripheral nerves away from the watchful eyes of the immune system. This covert journey can take weeks or even months, during which the infected person may show no symptoms at all, making it a silent yet lethal invader. Once the virus reaches the brain, it triggers an onslaught of severe neurological symptoms. The first signs might seem innocuous enough, slight fever, headache, and general weakness or discomfort. But then, the horror truly begins. The person might experience anxiety, confusion, agitation, and hallucinations. As the virus continues its relentless assault on the nervous system, it causes dramatic shifts in behavior. The infected person might become hyperactive or lethargic. They might have difficulty swallowing, leading to the infamous symptom known as hydrophobia or fear of water. And then, the progression of the disease takes a swift and terrifying turn. The person might slip into a coma, and within a few days, death usually follows. The speed at which rabies progresses after the onset of symptoms is truly horrifying. From the first sign of illness to death, it can be as short as a matter of days. It's a chilling journey, one that ends in an almost certain death sentence, but there's a twist in the tale. Despite its fatal journey within the body, rabies is not a death sentence if it's caught before the symptoms appear. Despite its deadly nature, rabies is preventable, but how? That's the million-dollar question and the answer might surprise you. Stay tuned as we delve into the world of rabies prevention in our next scene. The old adage holds true, prevention is better than cure, especially when there's no cure. Nowhere is this more relevant than in the case of rabies, a deadly virus with near-certain fatality once symptoms appear. The most effective way to prevent rabies is through vaccination. For animals, especially pets like dogs and cats, vaccination is crucial. It's the first line of defense. By vaccinating our pets, we not only protect them, but also ourselves and our communities. It's a ripple effect of safety. In areas where wild animals are common, such as raccoons, bats, or foxes, local authorities often implement vaccination programs to control the spread of the virus. For humans, the rabies vaccine is not typically part of regular immunization schedules, unless you are at higher risk due to your occupation or travel. However, if you've been bitten or scratched by an animal suspected of having rabies, getting vaccinated is a matter of urgency. This is known as post-exposure prophylaxis, and it's a series of shots that if administered promptly, can prevent the virus from taking hold. But what if you're not sure whether you've been exposed? Well, when it comes to rabies, it's always better to err on the side of caution. If you've had contact with an animal and there's any doubt about potential exposure, seek immediate medical attention. The fight against rabies is not just about individual action, but global awareness and cooperation. From the urban streets to rural villages, from the developed to the developing world, rabies is a global threat and it demands a global response. We need concerted efforts to improve public education about the disease, its transmission, and prevention. We need to strengthen veterinary systems and promote responsible pet ownership. Together, we can make strides in controlling and eventually eliminating this fatal disease. Knowledge is our weapon. Prevention is our shield. And the time to act is now. Remember, rabies is a deadly disease, but with knowledge and prevention, we can fight it.